everyone has been asking, should I expertise Sargon the Great? So in this video, I'm going to give you a guide that will help you, for your specific account, figure out if he should be your priority. Also, the developers recently released a Q&A talking about fixing lag, so that's got my attention. We'll talk about that too. Let's get going. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiscool Gaming, and today I want to help you figure out whether or not Sargon the Great is a commander that you should be working on. Because although I think his power level is really high, he doesn't have area of effect damage, and he really is beneficial to very specific accounts. So let's get into the considerations for Sargon the Great and help you figure out if you should be maxing him. Now, before I dive into should you max him or not? I just want to remind you very, very quickly what his kit does, because that's a fuel for the whole conversation. So the first thing is that he buffs himself on his active skill, so that for the next five seconds, you do 500 damage factor to whatever you hit. Big downfall here is that people can just walk away from you. This is not a damage over time effect, but works very similarly. This is a big downfall of this commander. Really good if you're rallying with him, your target doesn't run. Next skill, infantry led by this commander gain 10% increased attack, 20% increased health. And this is the part of the commander that makes him really strong. When attacking, this commander's troop has a 100% chance to inflict a stack of odd on the target, making it so they take 3% more skill damage, a maximum of 10 stacks, that's 30% skill damage. The next skill makes it so infantry led by this commander have 15% march speed, 10% more damage when attacking troops, which is amazing, and your normal attacks have a 10% chance to make it so you do 30% more damage. It's like a built-in mini Ring of Doom effect on this commander, and infantry units defense 10% when in the field, not a resource node, not in a garrison. When a target receives 10 stacks of odd, those stacks all fall off and they take a thousand damage factor, which is really crazy, and Sargon gets a shield of 300 factor, and he reduces skill damage taken by 15%. And when you're attacked, um, you have a 50% chance to inflict two stacks of odd on the target. Oh, but if you had a shield rolling, it's three stacks instead. So, wow. This commander is doing, a, it's just a very high power level, which is why I'm like, oh yeah, he seems really good. But should you max him? And I mentioned the downfall at the start that he's not just simple like Nevsky. You run around, you smack stuff with Nevsky, you get value. It's not simple when the active skill is this weird overtime thing. So here are the considerations for whether or not you should max Sargon. Let's move through the list. First and foremost, anytime you look at maxing a commander, you have to look at your equipment. How many sets of equipment do you have for infantry? If you only have one infantry set, then I would say Sargon is a commander you probably should consider skipping. If you have two or more infantry sets of equipment, then I will make the argument that he is on my short list of the top four infantry commanders. That includes Guan, it includes Skippy, Sargon, and Alex, and we'll talk more about those top commanders more in just a bit. So if your account has something like my restart does, like let's say you have one infantry march, you have one march of cavalry, and you have three marches of archers, for whatever reason, um, then I would say for you, since you only have one infantry march, you may not need to max Sargon. Okay, two or more infantry marches, and you should be looking at Sargon. The next thing we need to talk about is the fact that Sargon's debuff really scales in value to you as a player the more marches you have on the field. So how many marches do you have on the field? If it's three or less marches, his buff is less significant to you because you only have a couple marches benefiting, and you should focus on getting other commander pairings done first. And we'll talk more about what those commanders are in just a minute. But if you have five or more marches on the field, then Sargon is high value. For you, I would say yes, Sargon is a good investment. So, so far, I'm saying if you have two or more infantry marches and five or more total marches, Sargon is a good take. Jumping back in game, the next consideration very simply is, 
that sculptures are really limited. So is there a commander that should be higher priority for you? We talked about this a lot on my live stream and I'll have a card up in the top so you can go watch that later if you'd like. But we were running polls saying, who's better, Sargon or Nevsky? Sargon or Joan? Sargon or Boudicca? And we ran through a whole list of commanders. And as a community, we aligned on the fact that probably commanders like Nevsky, Skippy Prime, Boudicca, Joan Prime, probably Guan, probably even William potentially, are all higher power commanders than Sargon. Um, they are easier to use in the field. There's less asked of you because, you know, the damage is faster or the debuffs are stronger or there's AoE. There's all these things that make those commanders potentially better choices. So to me, Sargon feels like a really good investment for players that are running more than one March of Infantry that have five or more total marches, that already have potentially more important commanders knocked out. That includes, again, Nevsky, Skippy, Joan, Boudicca, um, Guan, William, and there may even be others. Now, of course, this all depends a little bit on your situation. One thing I will remind you is that just because a commander is really high power level, like let's say you really wanted to work on Nevsky, well, if you have nobody to pair them with and you don't have equipment to support them, you got to reconsider that investment and potentially consider a commander that fits more into your particular lineup. So just because a commander is high power level doesn't necessarily mean, oh, just go work on them. You really don't want to leave yourself stranded on the equipment front or on the pairing front. And a really great example of, gosh, like, is there some other march you need to finish more urgently? Let's say you have Esong in your lineup and nobody to pair him with. Well, in that case, I'm gonna make a really obvious argument that you should be working on Boudicca Prime. You've Not only is she a great commander, a higher priority than Sargon, according to our estimations here, but she's gonna pair with Esong. She's gonna make a great commander strong in the field. So completing marches is one of those things that I think is a higher priority than just taking a high power level commander like Sargon and just throwing him into the field. So there's actually a really narrow slice of people who probably should really consider expertising Sargon before anybody's done testing and before we really know exactly how he's gonna do. So although I think Sargon's power level is really high for very progressed accounts, the TLDR of this video is that for newer accounts or for accounts that are still working on uh, getting some pairings in place, they don't have their five pairs lined up, there are probably some other commanders that are higher priority. That said, I will be planning to expertise Sargon really quickly to use in this KVK that I'm in right now. So if you aren't already subscribed, I would strongly encourage you to do so. And also, it does me a huge favor when you throw a like on the video. It supports the channel and gets me going in YouTube's algorithms. Thank you for your support. It's what enables me to keep making these videos for you every single day. But with the topic of whether or not you should invest in Sargon, in a really good place, at least until we have him in our hands and doing some testing, let's get a look at the Q&A that the developers did. And I hope this has some good news about lag getting fixed. Here's the Q&A, the developer feedback. I'm really hyped to see what they've got for November. Um, question one, fix lag in Imperium KVKs. I guess they're, they're labeled as S, that's suggestion one, fix lag in Imperiums. We have been made aware of game lags. While the large number of participants during KVK poses technical limitations to the gameplay smoothness, rest assured we're continuously doing everything we can to minimize the lag and optimize your gaming experience. Look, lag seems to happen when we're all grouped up in tight spaces. I really feel like we need new maps designed around these technical limitations so that we don't experience them. I, look. I don't care if you got to scrap the maps we have to have maps that aren't laggy. Get us, please, to the not laggy Imperium KVK experience. I, it is really good to see this is on their radar. I, I at least really value their saying, yes, we see this. I hope that they will soon be saying, yes, we have prioritized fixes as well. Um, delete the siege attack on the crystal technology. I love this suggestion, uh, but I kind of predicted what their answer would be here. Um, they say, thank you, but no. We not, not not like that, but I'm paraphrasing. We've received feedback from governors that the siege attack is limited in its buff effects. We plan to improve this by devising a range attack mechanism, which will warrant the siege attack as a significant part of the gameplay. So I think they're probably correct 
in making siege units relevant. I, I actually think that's correct. It isn't relevant yet. And so until it is, we're just stuck feeling like we're really wasting a lot of crystals on the siege technology. So they're not going to change the technology. It would be nice if in the meantime, they just removed it as a prerequisite for all the other technology. That would be a nice feel good, but I get the impression they're just not going to do that. In the Lost Kingdom, uh, give kings more effective ways to send mail within the kingdom. I honestly have never had this problem. I just bookmarked the Lost Temple and then you just send it. Thank you for the suggestion. We understand the necessity of efficient communication within the kingdom. We're evaluating various potential improvements. For the time being, we encourage governors to take advantage of the in-game system's current functions, e.g. favorites. Yeah, favorite the location. This, is, I feel like, is a non-issue. So um, I, I honestly don't even know why this makes the top list of community concerns. Um, make sea battles available more often. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I would say make sea battles more relevant um, and more dynamic. Uh, they say, that's a great suggestion. We received a lot of positive feedback on the sea battles. We're glad that governors enjoy them. We'll definitely consider adding them to our events calendar. I just like to see them be more more relevant and dynamic than just like a little side irrelevant minigame. Um, and, and it's not a knock, but I, I don't know. When I think of sea battles coming to Rise of Kingdoms, didn't you envision like some grander, more strategic thing happening, like a map that involves sea battles? I hope we'll get to something where th where there's just more meaning to sea battles other than like, side mini game that you could skip and you honestly wouldn't miss much um, make kvk matchmaking rules based not solely on power but include kill points as one of the metrics as well i feel like a lot of things in this game are based on power and it doesn't make sense for them to be based in power so for example um if you get a look at imperium status which is a huge determination of whether or not big kingdoms can bring in new players it doesn't make any sense that you can put troops in your hospital and suddenly leave Imperium. Like, the troops aren't dead. You haven't actually lost the power. I feel like there's a lot of things in the matchmaking that potentially, I mean, I don't know how it exactly works, could be more sophisticated. And I think that putting troops into your hospital to avoid a tough match for KVK is just honestly kind of dastardly. It's like a waste of everybody's resources and in turn enjoyment of the game, but I, I won't go too in depth on that. I think they should look at matchmaking. Um, make it the default for double tapping to select my own troops to avoid accidentally selecting friendly troops in battles. Let me tell you, this is very high on my list. I would say in my top four improvements for the game is making the controls of the game better and less annoying. And this is one of those really annoying things. Like it doesn't seem all that bad until you're fighting a KVK and you're targeting your own troops, which makes no sense. You can't target your own troops for anything. You can't target... Uh, friendly troops uh, for a literally anything other than like joining a rally. So, and that's not what I'm talking about. So when you're fi fighting in the field and you target something that's irrelevant and then your troops are wandering off or standing around and your enemies freaking clap in your cheeks, like, yeah, th this is huge. So thank you for bringing this to our attention. We'll consider ways to improve the selection accuracy. I couldn't be happier with that response other than they're saying we're doing it sooner. Selection accuracy is actually a really sophisticated way of, of saying what I was requesting there. Give us selection accuracy. And that to me is a table stake for this game. Honestly, like th this is like a must have um, in this game. And the only reason you can get away with not having selection accuracy is because there's literally no other game in the market other than the upcoming Call of Dragons, um, which card will be up in the top if you want to check that out. It's also made by Lilith. Um, that There's no other game in this genre that has open field combat. So give us selection accuracy. Just secure your lead as like the city building war game franchise that can get open field combat right. Um, the latest update introduces formations and armaments, among other new features that are making the game more complex and difficult to grasp. And they say, thank you for your feedback. It's always been our goal to bring more exciting content and strategic depth to our gameplay, which is why we're dedicated to bringing more content to rock with each update. That said, we understand how new features may come across as a little overwhelming to many of our governors. We will do our best to make it easier for governors to understand the update by posting more detailed guides and simplifying features, etc. We're always open to suggestions, especially when it comes to new features, since we believe that together with the community, we can make Rise of Kingdoms even better. Let me tell you, if I had gotten my hands on armaments and they'd given me like a week to play with it, or even just a couple days to play with it um, in like a test server, I could have made a 10 to 20 minute video, okay? A 10 to 20 minute video that would have made it very easy for everyone to understand armaments. But because I still don't really have my hands on armaments yet on any of my accounts, I can't offer that to, to anybody, really. Um, so I, I feel like 
you could leverage your content creators to make really clean videos. Uh, that would be really simple. I would love to be involved in like an embargo where all the content creators get access to it. And then on a certain date, we all release it. I know at one point in the past that didn't work where someone released early. And since that time, we don't get this stuff early anymore. I think everyone would benefit with really clean, simple explanations. And the TLDR of armaments is there are more stats. And I actually think if you wanted to make formations simpler to understand, if you just got rid of the ranged formation for now, then it would just all of a sudden be really easy to understand that formations are just stats and armaments are more stats that are just chained onto a specific formation. And that's it. They're just specific to a formation and you equip them to your commanders, right? It's just more equipment, okay? And the only thing that I feel makes formations maybe a little complicated is that the ranged formation is just obviously way more complex in what it does for the game. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, but it is the most complex formation by a long shot. Um, and, it, and if you didn't have that one, the rest of it is all, it's all just stats. And that's actually pretty easy to understand. So anyways, um, I'm actually feeling good overall about what was in here. Lag is one of my top things and selection accuracy is one of my top things. The only thing that's not in here that they did mention in another video, card will be up in the top and in the end screen for this one, uh, was the design of forts and the fact that you can stack like 100 forts on top of each other and that that really gums up uh, the fun of fighting in KVK. That is one of my top things as well. So they actually are looking at a lot of the top things that I think are important to look at. So let me know down below in the comments, are you maxing Sargon? What do you think of this community suggestions and the suggestions that are here. If you want more information about the new commanders, card will be in the end screen. And as I said, there was a huge summit that the developers did where they talked about the next like six to 12 months of Rise of Kingdoms. I'll have that card in the end screen. If you haven't seen that video, it's really important. You're gonna wanna watch that.